Obi-Wan Kenobi has concluded and that now means we have three live action Star Wars series for us to talk about today as I think you need three to create a ranking. I'm slowly making my way through all of the other Star Wars shows like finishing off Rebels but I'll have to delay that Star Wars TV show ranking to a later point. But for now let's talk about those three live action Star Wars shows. Obi-Wan Kenobi had so much potential, but unfortunately it wasn't tapped into here and I can't lie, I was very disappointed with it. And the main reason why it disappointed for me is because the show is called Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's not even really the main focus it feels. I know people hated the new character Reva, make a spin-off about Reva or plug her storyline out of this series and make it her own mini-series and that actually sounds pretty good to me. But having this one crammed in with two characters who have so much history in this franchise felt like the wrong thing to do. Another thing was, I felt like, okay, this is such a personal story between Darth Vader and Obi-Wan. It's going to feel very, very different to what we felt before in this franchise. But they had to go bring in two Skywalker kids by the name of Luke and Leia, who they're trying to use them as plot points where we're meant to feel emotion when you don't because... You know that they survive and they go on to have a long history. So I felt like it was very lazy and a very bad decision to bring them into this show. Or not necessarily bring them into the show, but to bring them in and use them as much as he did because I thought the actress for Leia did a really good job, but she was used so much on screen that it became a bit obnoxious and annoying. And you can see that this is the problem because this show is titled Obi-Wan Kenobi and I'm not really talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi. I thought Ewan McGregor did a good job didn't do anything too special because there wasn't anything too special for him to do I found. His interactions with Darth Vader were by far the best but they were very limited in this show. This was a mysterious period of time where we'd only really seen a few episodes of Star Wars Rebels address what happens in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope so I was really really hoping for some really personal and emotional stories and they just didn't really happen. There were some great moments in the finale which was for me the best episode along with the penultimate one but I feel like that was always going to be going to be the case especially when a six episode mini series doesn't really get started until that penultimate episode i was fine with them taking a slow approach with the first two episodes but from then on it just felt like they weren't picking up the pace and they even had a stupid filler episode with a rescue mission that we've seen a million times in the star wars franchise i was just very frustrated with this show because it had the potential to be the most emotional in the star wars universe but instead it just felt like another disney plus show In some cases, I share similar frustrations in this show from Obi-Wan Kenobi in the sense that Boba Fett is the title character, but he isn't the main focus for the whole show. The two best episodes of the show, one has a five minute cameo from the lead character Boba Fett and the other one just doesn't have him at all and I would be lying if I said I didn't enjoy those episodes. Part of me had to hold back from enjoying it as much as others because I felt like it was very lazy and a cheap excuse to chuck a bit of fan service in there of being the Mandalorian season 2.5. What those episodes did for me is highlight that Din Djarin is a far more interesting character than Boba Fett. Don't get me wrong, Boba Fett's cool, but I feel like taking Boba Fett off the side this mysterious character, putting him in the lead of his own show, he's not as interesting. I did like how the show started off by addressing the Sarlacc pit and how he survived and not to mention his relationship with the Tusken Raiders. But overall, this show did fall a bit flat. I didn't have as high expectations for it as Obi-Wan Kenobi, but still, this did fall below my expectations. But the clear winner is, of course, The Mandalorian. It wasn't really going to be anything else. Both its two seasons are better than any other show on this list. I love how the first season, to start off with, showed us a completely different side of 
the Star Wars universe, didn't have to show us any Skywalkers or ties into the previous films. It made its own story and then built everything off of that. Season two is also great and I know that kind of contradicts what I said as it does tie in other things from Star Wars universes, but by that point it feels like it earns it and it feels more natural. It's cooler how it ties into everything rather than being cheap fan service. Din Djarin is a compelling character as well as his relationship with this guy, Baby Yoda, who I'm still gonna call that because I hate the name Grogu. It's just a different kind of Star Wars show that is what the franchise is needed and to still needs something like that to this day. It needs something different from what we've seen and something which just isn't relying on the Mandalorian going forward because at the moment it's standing head and shoulders above the rest of it. Thank you so much for watching today's video, I really hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what your ranking is down below of the three live action Star Wars shows. Having Obi-Wan Kenobi in last place may be controversial but it really is just how I feel. I'd like to see what you think down below. While you're there, if you could like and subscribe, it would really mean a lot. And once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in my next video.